Good morning. This is Pastor Becca here on this Monday morning. I hope you're having a wonderful start to your week. It is our prayer that you sense the presence of God very near to you as you worshiped yesterday. That has been our prayer each and every week as we have been unable to gather together in person, that God would still faithfully be at work, that God would still um, be meeting you right where you are at, and that you would sense that God is still moving, God is still speaking, God is still transforming. We are so thankful for the ways that God continues to do that in our midst. Um, so I want to share a word with you this morning from Acts chapter 16, beginning in verse 25. Acts chapter 16, beginning in verse 25. And we kind of pick up in the middle of the story, so I want to provide just a little bit of the backstory for us this morning. Paul and Silas uh, were going around teaching and preaching as they often do when this woman who is able to tell fortunes begins to follow them around. And everywhere they go, this woman begins calling out, these are servants of the Most High God who have come to tell you the way of salvation. Wherever they went, this woman was following them around. And eventually Paul becomes so frustrated and annoyed that he calls the unclean spirit within this woman to come out. Now for this woman, this is a moment of celebration. This is a moment of freedom and release. This is a moment of transformation. But for those who are depending on her ability to tell fortunes to make money, this is not a moment of celebration. In fact, they are deeply upset with Paul and Silas. So upset that Paul and Silas have impacted their bottom line that they throw Paul and Silas in jail. And that's where our story picks up this morning. Uh, Paul and Silas find themselves there in jail. So Acts chapter 16, beginning in verse 25, in God's word, God's word reads, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked them, Sir, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. And this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. One of the things that has always impressed me about Paul is his ability to take any situation that he finds himself in, often very difficult situations, and to see the opportunity in it. For most people, if they found themselves in prison, their mindset would be, I have to find a way out of prison. We have to get out of prison so that we can continue sharing this good news of what we have found in Jesus Christ. We've got to get out of here so that we can push the unpause button and get back to our ministry. But Paul never had that mindset. Instead, Paul had this amazing ability to take any situation, even the most difficult situations like this one, where he finds himself in prison, in chains, and to see the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus in the midst of it. It's incredible the way he always looks for the opportunities. And this situation is no different. Here Paul and Silas are, it's about midnight, and they're singing songs of praise. They're praying prayers, and suddenly there's this violent earthquake. This violent earthquake that causes the jail cell doors to open up and the chains to fall off of them, presenting them with this golden opportunity to run for freedom. And yet Paul and Silas do not take this golden opportunity before them. Instead, they use this opportunity, even in the midst of prison, to bear witness to who Christ is, to even someone like their jailer who probably had not treated them the best. They take even this opportunity and to even this unlikely recipient 
of grace. And they take this opportunity to share the good news with him, to bear witness to him. Paul has this innate ability to find the opportunity in any situation to bear witness to Christ. And I think this is an important word for us, especially in the midst of these uncertain days. A lot of us are trying to to figure out what what does it look like to be the church? What does it look like to be the people of God when we are currently unable to gather together in person? What does it look like for us to, to share the love of Christ, to bear witness to God in the midst of these days? And I think for some of us, it seems like almost there's been this pause button pushed. There's been this pause button that we need to unpush by getting back to gathering together in the sanctuary because it's so hard for us to imagine how we can possibly bear witness to Christ if people are not able to come through the sanctuary doors to hear the good news. But friends, I think we see very clearly here in this text that God is not limited by things like a prison. God is not limited by things like a pandemic. God is still at work. This has not been a pause moment for God. Rather, God is inviting us as the church, just as he did Paul, to see the opportunity in our situation, to bear witness to who Christ is. You know, I think probably the jailer and the other prisoners probably thought Paul and Silas were a little bit crazy. (laughs) Here they were in this impossible situation, in this terribly difficult situation, and they were there and they were still praying and they were still singing songs of joy to the Lord. How could they do that in the midst of these difficult situations? And yet that bore witness to who God is. And friends, I think we have that same opportunity today. In the midst of these difficult days when so many around us are looking for hope, we have the opportunity to bear witness to who Christ is. We're not on a pause button, church. We may be unable to gather together in person, but God is not on a pause button and the church is not on a pause button. We have opportunities right before us. We might have to get creative, but we have opportunities right before us to share the good news of Christ, to bear witness to the love of Christ right where we are, even here and even now. And so that would be my encouragement to you today. Ask God to open your eyes to the opportunities that are right around you. How can you bear witness to the love of Christ in the midst of these days? Um, How can you take this difficult situation in which we find ourselves uh, trying to figure out this new rhythm and way of life? How can you take this difficult situation and use it to testify to who God is and to bear witness to the hope of who God is in your life. Friends, I think this is a wonderful opportunity for us, just as it was for Paul, to bear witness to who Christ is, even in the midst of these days. God is still at work, and we as the church want to be a part of what God is doing. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you May you go and and sense the presence of God in your life in a very real way today. We love you all. Blessings.